Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us today for this session about bringing your building into the 21st century. I'm Nikki Jovakik from Lookup Strata, and I'm also the Managing Director of Tower Body Corporate, a body corporate management company in Queensland. I'm your host, and we welcome back Jake Sharp from Mymore. It may seem like apartment living hasn't really changed very much over the past 20 years. Many buildings operate similarly to what they did in the 20th century. And why is this happening? Are we Luddites or is change just too hard or too expensive? Or are there many owners risk many owners in your building that are risk adverse, preferring to stick with what they know rather than venturing into uncharted territory. New shiny high rises may have an abundance of technology that has reshaped how people interact with their living spaces and the broader environment. But what about buildings that have been with us for a while? How easy is it to retrofit these strata schemes and bring them up to date? Retrofitting old buildings and incorporating modern technology can both be feasible and beneficial, but it can also come with challenges that need careful consideration. So Jake Sharp's here to guide us on the road to the future, and you'll be heading up to the roof of your building to catch a sky taxi to your next meeting in no time. Before we begin, I'd like to mention that the information in this session, including the discussions arising from submitted questions and chat conversations, is not legal advice or advice and should not be relied upon as advice. You should seek independent advice before acting on the information contained in the session. And we welcome Jake um, back today. And before starting my more, Jake Sharp ran a cleaning business responsible for 220 strata buildings and managed a large building. Jake identified a communication gap. Residents, committees and strata managers needed more effective communication. He observed that buildings with full-time managers fared better, while smaller buildings with 150 lots or less experienced less effective communication. He founded my more, a simple yet highly effective software solution to foster to harmony among strata residents. My More, or the Move In, Move Out Register, emerged as an online portal serving strata managers, building managers and residents, and My More is a central hub for building information, alerts and moving procedures, streamlining communication and simplifying property management processes. So welcome, Jake. Thanks so much for joining us again today for this really exciting session. Awesome. All right, well, we'll kick it off with the first service feature product um, that I can see out there that is being utilised now at a fair few buildings. Um, so that's what we call out ours, um, the C2A feature, which is the click to access and digital key safes. And I guess this is, yeah, just uh, we're trying to uh, explain and tell people that no matter the age or size of your building, that we should be embracing these new technologies, you know, because a lot of the, a lot of the time, these new technologies are, are solving or minimizing some building issues, um, and this is one of them, one particular one, um, which we'll go quickly go into um, about what it's all, what it's doing, and it's also making the building smarter and and as we said, bringing the buildings into the twenty first century. But ultimately, it's also making the building safer. So a lot of these features, this one in particular, is actually staying to make the building safer. So those three aspects are really important from, from what I've noticed in the last 15 years being in the industry. Um, so something like this, and we did talk about this the last time, but, you know, a lot of key safes um, out there, a lot of buildings are, are, are sort of saying no to short stay access, which I, I, I sort of think that we could get a, around that because of, of the safety issue. So if we can turn your building digital, and, and as I've written at the bottom there, we're not saying that, all these products that, or some of the products that come in, are actually taking are taking over from what originally existed. We're saying that works in conjunction with what's currently there. So there were keys, then there were fobs, and now we're going to do remote access via their mobile phone or down the track. Uh, the next um, we'll go into it: facial recognition or car number plate recognition. We're saying that this is what what we think. Maybe is going to what is what's going to be used for the next thirty years. So embrace embrace it. But still, if you want to use the fobs and keys, then fine. Then you work that what's best for your building. So so you know some of those pictures we've got like key safes. You know they get cut off. They're unsafe. So let's embrace this better technology to make your building safer. And then you can include trade access, short stay access, um, and and. We, we, we then also know um, who's coming and going into the building. So we're making the building safer. So 
I guess we can also then, we've seen how that works from the front of the building. So garage doors, um, the building front door, have a digital key safe with no codes that the managers control which trades can gain access to that key safe. And obviously that then if the keys go missing, we know who opened the key safe last. So all of this can now be done, including the apartment front doors. And that's a discussion that you have to have within your building that over time, maybe that is something that you're going to look at, that you'll change all every apartment door or some apartments will use a digital key safe and some, uh, sorry, the digital door handle and some will still use their keys. So again, work what's best for your building um, to make it probably smarter, safer for the building. Because if, if there are short stay guests, people that buy investment properties, why should they be excluded? Or why do they have to try and go behind your back to try to use short stays and hand over fobs that we say is unsafe or, you know, we don't know who's got them or they go missing or all of that. Oh, okay. So we've got now a system that can actually remove the short stay for those, uh, for those apartments. And it's all controlled via the, the for our, our system, but all front end systems that can be controlled um, digitally and all they get is a digital fob um, to their phone um, and also their email uh, address. And that's how easy it should be. In terms of like, uh, there's all different ways. There's Bluetooth, there's mobile based um, products out there. QR codes that are on site, I, I, I think, yeah, that's great. It's better than having fobs. But also we're going to look at that, that they can be damaged, they can be removed. So all of a sudden you can have a product in there that maybe you need to scan QR codes to gain access. But I think that that also can have some issues. And that's why I'm, I'm loving these new products that come out there that are Bluetooth but don't need QR codes or, or mobiles that don't need QR code, uh, don't need um, anything physical. And in terms of backups, you can have, you know, there's all different products out there. You can have everything digital and then you can have just a, you know, a pad that's installed at the front of your building with a, a sorry, a, a keypad that can have codes just in case backup if you need. Um, so, yeah, that's pretty much this first feature. Yeah, don't know if there's any questions. Uh, we did have a question, um, Jake, and it was from uh, Heather just asking whether it can be used for access to swimming pools or other common areas I'd imagine as well and book, like a booking system. Yep. So actually, origin, originally, we, we used this one particular product was just for the uh, um, trade. But then, yes, we had a building that they had the theatre room and kitchenette, and they were being booked on our system, but any front end system. And then the manager would have to go to the security system and then allow that, that uh, fob access for that booking. And she was like doing it, it was like full time work. So then we integrated with and we changed those common areas. And yes, so in that picture on the left-hand side, you've got building front door, garage door, door room, and you've got barbecue area. When the resident books the barbecue area, let's say for this Friday night between, you know, five and 10, that blue, that barbecue area button will go blue and they can use that between their bookings. And that's how easy it is. And no one needs to do anything. Excellent. All right, that's great. And we did go into a lot more detail around that, didn't we, Jake, when we spoke in the last um, webinar about improving security in your building. So I will send a link out to that when we send the recording out later today. And you can have a look at that if you're interested in going into it. And something that we do get get asked all of the time when you talk about this and we get questions come in about it as well uh, through Lookup Strata. We've just had a question from Chris about what happens with all these smart systems when there's a power failure. Yep. So I guess where every building is different and where we're not changing what would happen now if if the system if the building is created with a fob access and that's how you gain access yeah you won't be able to or the building will have doors that are open if they are um, not connected to power and it's let's say it's a building that was built in 1970 um, they want the front door digital we can, we, you know, there are companies out there that do um, did the digital door handles, which is the image in that in the screen. And what happens is they're power uh, battery operated. So they're probably, even though they're even if on your apartment doors, they're all battery operated. So that would work, but the main doors or the garage door would be the same as what's currently used. And they, I know they might automatically open in case of a power outage, or they don't, and that's the same no matter if you're using what system is there now 
or we put in this digital. And we've just been asked from Cliff about what is the install infrastructure? Is it wireless or requires cables? Yeah, so um, there's different products out there. Um, there's generally, they'll, most, most buildings would require Wi-Fi. So Wi-Fi, um, so that's why some products don't, or these new, all these new technologies, sometimes it's harder to install in some buildings and some buildings maybe can't, but a majority of them should look into it, which is what we're saying. And yes, so there, some need to be uh, hardwired. Um, so some companies put their own controller in that work in conjunction with what's currently there. Like I said, we're not taking over what's there. For the next five years, you might use the FOB as well as, as our, our system. So uh, the yes, there is a little bit of wiring that needs to be done generally from all these companies, but it can be done if, yeah, no matter when the building was built, yeah, it can be done and it's not a problem. Okay, and we just had a few comments come through as well from people who've used similar pool access um, type situations and, and um, someone else is commenting that it's fail safe. So I think it's been used out there in some of the buildings and they've got some positive comments about it. Uh, and also uh, there's a question just coming in about the, um, fire, the fire rated doors and how you handle fire rated doors as well in that situation. Yep, so generally if it's a door handle, a digital door handle, um, the one in the screen, in the image, um, most of the products um, that we provide, well, that, that we, the companies that we use are all fire rated door handles. So nothing changes, nothing, everything's the same, they're fire rated. Um, yeah, so that's why when it comes to like door handles for either existing buildings or, uh, you know, apartment doors, we disagree, well, not disagree, we, we think you can't, it's, you, sh you shouldn't just go and go to, not Bunnings, but anywhere and just buy a door handle. It should be done through your building. And then we know that that door handle that you're getting is fire rate. So it's very important that you don't just go buy one overseas. You install it, yes, that could be an issue. And that's why we're saying use your front of house system. If they can provide this, fantastic, or, or they have a company that does, yeah. Okay, and I'm not sure if you can answer this because it might be specific to the building, but Michael just asked, could you give everyone an idea of the cost estimate and what the back-end support is for a system like that? Yeah, I guess I guess there's all different systems, so it's a bit a bit hard to say. But what I what I see out there, you know, there's an installation cost, a one-off installation cost, and then there's obviously ongoing, and everyone does different things. So generally, like if you're looking at a at a building that you know, just wants the front door and the garage door, and you know, where you could be something between $1,000 and $2,000 installation cost. And then every building, every company has different yearly fee, depending on, you know, because there's reporting and um, if there's a short stay uh, part of it that they can use uh, feature. So yeah, there's you know, ongoing cost could be from $100 to $400 um, per access point, depending. Okay, excellent. All right, that sounds great, Jake. Well, we might let you move on to the next slide now. I think we've <laughs> covered some of the questions there and we're right to go. Well, done. perfect. The next page is we're going to follow on from what I was just talking about. Um, so obviously you can do click to access, front door, garage door, but um, a lot of the questions we get uh, with that, that's fantastic. That's great product. We're going to do it. But what happens if my phone dies? Um, you can't get into the building. You know, at the end of the day, um, my response to that is what happens if you lose your keys or the, what happens if you lose your fob? So we're not tr we're not changing everything, but we're saying, okay, that's what you've done for the last 30 years. And yes, you have to call it, um, you know, before phones, when you lost your keys, what did you have to do? So, you know, we're, we're, not, we're just, I'm listening, I'm understanding, but I also see these products out there that say, okay, well, hang on, Look, why a building that was built in 1985 that has an intercom system, they want to go to click to access. So they want to have the, uh, they've, they've got MIME or any front of house system. They want to have the uh, click to access. So they have a button on their phone. But what about we do a fail safe and we, we put a screen that does facial recognition. So it's a smart, inter well, it's not an intercom system, but you can have a smart intercom system, but it's not. This is just a facial recognition that's connected to the front door. And so you can have that as a backup. So your phone dies, no problem. This building has installed a screen next to the intercom that's facial recognition. So there's, oh yeah, all these products that are coming out, 
that are solving a lot of the issues, even when you're looking at a new product. Um, or there's, you know, there's smart intercoms that you can replace your intercom system now. You actually probably don't even need to wire it. It's just a screen that's at the front of your building that's connected to the front door and maybe their lift if it's restricted. Um, and so that it is all on your phone. So it's 100% smart on your mobile phone and away you go. So, you know, there's all different prices, I guess, we, uh, I can't give a price if someone asks because every there's heaps of companies out there. We work with a few of them, um, but every building is different depending on what, what's needed. But, um, you know, we're looking at the facial recognition as a backup. We're also looking at, you know, car, uh, car number plate recognition, a lot of things that we want to do hands-free, um, get off your phone, fine. We understand if you're in your car, you can't use your phone. So how does that work? So we're, we're looking at a lot of things that will solve all those issues um, that we keep getting questions about when we say, okay, yeah, great. You can have click to access. You can have facial recognition. Oh, but what about in my car? I've got to touch my phone when I open the door. Okay. So, you know, you can do... We can use sort of stuff like AI that will say, okay, welcome home, Nikki. Would you like me to open the garage door? And then the garage door opens. So there's all these products out there that we can look at in integrating into a building depending on what, what level they want. Um, and I guess with the facial recognition, you can do, um, uh, you can allow trades access. So they can actually, the manager can just ask the trade to send them a, a picture of them, their face, they actually don't need to go down to site and they can put that in the program. And so that the, when the tray goes down there, they're all, they've already been added in by the manager and they just go to the um, screen and click to access. Uh, they put their face and the door will open. And they, the manager will give them access between, you know, 9, nine and 12 today or 24 seven. And then we've got a register, a log of every time someone's coming in and out of the building, which, you know, a lot of buildings that were built, yeah, 70s, 80s or whatever, that they, they never had that before. So, um, so yeah, makes makes the building a, a quite a lot safer. Um, and you also, I guess, down the track, you're going to look at when you install something like this and you compare maybe our people using the FOBs you know, you go into the register, the security company, you check the fobs, how, how many people are using it. Maybe in three years, you actually might remove the fobs altogether because you only or only three people are using them. Well, that's great. That's a safer building. Only three, three um, fobs in circulation out of the 25 apartments as opposed to before, we, we had no idea. So that helps as well. And again, back to the trade and short stay, guess, yeah, selfies. It makes it a lot easier. Um, for people coming in and out of the building. Okay, excellent. And we've had a few questions about cybersecurity and the safety of that data that gets stored as well, Jake, and what happens to it. And I don't know whether you can answer this. This might be more of a um, strata manager's question, but I'm talking about a privacy policy as well for buildings that look at installing this type of thing. Yeah, so, I mean, we've got a privacy policy on our, on our uh, system, and I guess every front of our system will have well, pr pretty much the same. But yeah, the, the idea is that when a building signs up to MIMOR or any of those front of house systems, that when we integrate with these other companies, that it doesn't matter. It's back, MIMOR is protecting the, the, the person registering and the building. So we'll make sure, um, and I'm sure that all the front of house system that use these other companies and, and technologies and products and services, that they're that they're connected and that it doesn't matter because my more is 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 looking after that for the privacy uh, aspect of it. Okay, wonderful. And then someone else has just mentioned that um, is fingerprint a good solution as well rather than facial recognition? Or yeah, you could. They're, they're all, the products generally will have facial recognition, uh, um, thumb. Uh, no, uh, recognition they'll have a code and they can also have some fobs even physical keys for the apartment front doors so you can have all of them um, and you can use two of them if you want and then the apartment doors can just put their keys somewhere as a backup and fobs as a backup and just use the code the thumbprint and 
the facial recognition so the, the, the building can have front, uh, facial recognition. Yeah, so you can, yeah, all products have different. So depending on who you go for, I'm sure that there's a cost to it, different costs, different products. So, yeah. Okay, and we've had a few questions come in about the number plate recognition. Yeah, yeah. So the number plate recognition is, you know, it's not for every building. Um, there is a cost to it, which is why we're saying maybe the click to access you know, push a button and then we'll do AI that it says, welcome home, Nikki. Uh, but yeah, the the car, the, we're seeing a, a, a few buildings that are using the car number um, plate recognition. The only thing that I do see a little bit of an issue with that, um, yes, it's much better than what, what's out there now. Like obviously if the garage door, you want that, then great. But when cars come and go or new cars or a car breaks down, there needs to be a backup. Um, and maybe you do click to access and car number plate recognition because that, that, that's um, where facial recognition and click to access based on your mobile phone, that generally these days you don't change your mobile phone. You can move to providers and keep the same mobile phone, not like you used to. Car, rec uh, car number plate recognition is fantastic, but it also then yeah, becomes an issue. If your car breaks down and you need to borrow a car, how do you get back into how do you get into the garage? But again, it's still an amazing product that they're building, and maybe you know there are ways around it. But yeah, that's the only thing that I can see with that. Okay, excellent. All right, well, I'll let you move on to the next slide. <laughs> awesome, perfect. All right. Well, so all right, digital screens. Um, so we see this as starting to happen a lot more um, in buildings. Um, I guess communication is really important um, to buildings. So, you know, it doesn't matter, I guess, you know, if it's a brand new building and you walk in there and it's like, oh, this is amazing. They've got screens in the lift. They've got screens in the lobbies. Oh, I know when there's an upcoming event, et cetera. You know, oh, I come back to my building that was built in 1990 and it's like, but where, why can't we have that? Well, you can. And I think um, more companies are creating, you know, these screens and I think more buildings are starting to realise that, yeah, why can't we? All we need is a PowerPoint, install this screen. Um, why not? There are some companies that are doing it for free. They, they, they'll put the screen in for free, you know, uh, uh, if they've got a certain amount of apartments. Um, and then, yeah, from a manager's point of view, how easy it is, you can use a front of our system to send an email or, or, or notice about an upcoming event, hard rubbish day to everyone via the front of our system and then send it to the screen as well. You might have seven notices going at once and they, they keep um, swapping every, let's call it seven seconds. So people can come home, they go, oh, great, let me have a look. Like, yep, that's, oh, yeah, and I've got that. Oh, the hot water's going to be off tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Oh, I'll go to gym before, you know, and have a hot shower before I go to work. So because sometimes when they get an email, they forget about it or an SMS, they forget about it. So this is really in their face. It's communicating to them what's happening. And we can also, I guess, um, there are a few companies that do different um, different things, but you could do, if a building says, oh, well, that's great, but you know, after nine o'clock, I don't want those notices. I want, to, I want people to come home and see artwork. Okay, then you put the artwork. So you might say, okay, this building is going to do 9 a.m., to 7, 8, 7 p.m., we're going to have the notices rotating every seven seconds, five seconds. And then after that, we're going to put a, you know, winter, we're going to have a digital a, a fireplace or we're going to have a vase or flowers or whatever it is. And so, so that changes also the lobby and it, and, and it makes it look a bit, you know, up to date, um, modernises your building. Can be a, a orange brick building or yellow brick building, and you have this beautiful screen in, in the lobby. Like, why not? Um, you can do it. <laughs> so, yeah, that's pretty much the digital screen. And I think sometimes the companies will even offset some of the costs with advertising, won't they, with local businesses and things? So you can actually, um, at the building can make a bit of money out of it, or they can pay for the actual installation and the service itself. Is that right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Which okay, great. Yeah, it helps, you know, bring the building and the, and the you know, shops, cafes and stuff together. Um, you know, weather, you could do weather as well. You can do all different things. But, yeah, if they can, that's how they, yeah, could 
make it a, a quite affordable for even for the smaller buildings. Mm. And I would love to see stats on buildings if people have got these um, screens installed and they're being reminded of AGMs and things. Do they get a better? I'd love to know whether they get a better turnout um, at their meetings because people are reminded they might be standing in the lift. You go, oh, that's right. There is a there's an AGM tonight. I forgot about that. I'll I'll jump on the yeah. Zoom call at six o'clock or something. And that would be yeah, that'd be excellent to know if anyone has any stats around that and if it has helped with attendance. Uh, all right, I'll let you move on to the next one. We did we did have. A question actually, there's a comment that's just come in from um, Alison saying these points might help advise. We have a Wi Fi intercom that calls your mobile phone. If you don't answer, it calls the next mobile phone of your choice, partner, flatmate, up to three numbers. Owners are given an access code or fob if they prefer. Renters and short stay are only provided fobs. Access codes are too easy to pass on. The great thing about this type of system is you can let someone in, like the postman, and when you're not home, or you can can cancel access codes and fobs at the touch of a button and make that all on the app. It's much easier um, than changing locks. So there's this, yeah, some information about someone who's using it practically and they're finding it beneficial. Beautiful. Electric bollards. So I guess um, me having the cleaning business, uh, looking after quite a few buildings, this was a big issue and it still is a big issue today, um, for mainly for visitor car spots. So we're saying that and we're seeing and companies are coming to us with uh, uh, electric, electric bollards and, and I'm sitting there going, well, it's a no-brainer. Why isn't this being installed? Um, if this is an issue at your building, well, here we've got a product. So you've got a front of house system that can do uh, have a booking system. So same as what we were saying before about, you know, when you book the common area, theatre room or kitchenette, your fob, this is the same thing. Install a battery operated or you can have a hardwired um, product as well probably easier for a battery operator, which in from the manager's perspective, they'll get a um, battery warning when the battery goes low. So they know when they need to um, change it. It might be once a year, depending on how much it's used, once a year, maybe you might be able to get two years out of it. And then, um, but generally you'll have a booking uh, system. Uh, the resident books it. Um, there might be three visitor spots, one visitor spot, um, and they come down. And you can do, obviously, three-hour inter in intervals or 10 hours, five hours, whatever you want. They come down, they press the button, the electronic bollard goes down, the power park's over, and that's it. Now, that's fine. That's now an easy system. We know who parks there, how long they're going to be there for. If they overstay, you can do stuff like um, there's a fee of $50 every hour after that. And we can have your credit card that's been connected to your account and... There you go. So it becomes a lot fairer and people don't have to worry so much about it all. That if someone wants to stay there for an extra three hours, it's going to cost them $150. That's okay if that's what they want to do or they have to rebook it. Um, so we're just trying to say, say okay, here's, here's the issue. Here's a product that can solve this issue and well, let's embrace it. Let's use it. Um, and then we don't have to worry about how that works anymore. <laughs> Same with EV charging stations. So I think that obviously the EV charging stations isn't for every building, and I understand that. There's, you know, uh, three-phase power that you need. Some buildings don't have it, et cetera. But a lot of buildings, new buildings are being built with it. But um, if you've got an EV charging station, well, why don't you have a uh, electric bollard? So when I go and I've got my electric car, I go to book the EV station. Well, at least I can't. I go downstairs and someone's someone's already there. Well, how was I meant to know? Here you can go. Okay, go down. I've booked it. I click the electric bollard. Goes down. I park my car. I charge. Done. I leave. Bollard back up and it's ready for the next person. So it's a lot easier that way. Managers don't have to worry about it. Um, residents are happier because they know that when they book it, it's theirs. So there's like those two products. And then there's obviously um, the uh, individual car spots. And I guess if you've got a product like this, like we had that key safe that was uh, installed and we went to the common area rooms and our residents using to open and close the building, you know, front doors, uh, garage doors. Well, we've got one, an electron bollard that's going to fix the visitor spot and the EV charging stations. But what about individual car spots? So why don't you offer it? to individuals. If they want to use it and buy it, then great, but at least they've got a front of our system that 
they, they can use it really easy. And then they could possibly rent out their car spot with an electro, electric bar and give that new person, you know, they might live in the building and they don't have a car, they've got a spot, you know, and people sometimes park there because they know that there's no car, there's car, a car has never parked there. So they put the electronic buyout in and then they can share that new person who's paying them 50 bucks a, a, a week or whatever. And they give them access. And when they finish, they take them off their system and that's it. And so it's, so I guess individual car spots can then use it or they just want it for themselves. And the manual ones, you've got to get it out of your car, get the key, lock it. Here, you just reverse it. And some, some of them have sensors. So you just reverse the electronic bollard goes out. You don't even you don't even need to press down. So uh, press up. So yeah, that, that's pretty much this this um, this feature. Um, and yeah, there's a there's a big need for it, and we're getting asked a lot about it. Excellent. I can see why, because we get so many questions about parking, <laughs> definitely. So if it can solve the issue, I think that's great. Um, and at a relatively small cost, I think, too. Uh, yeah. So we just had a comment come in uh, from Alison just saying, just check, because in um, in New South Wales, you do need approval um, because of the, the car space um, being common property, the floor's common property area. And of course, we say any of these um, items that Jake's talking about and just check back with your committee as well and also look at the bylaws uh, whenever you're considering anything. We've had a bit of a conversation between people about um, how, how technology has been used in their building um, and there has been mentioned that sometimes you know not everyone agrees with it and people want a different system or they might not have mobile phones and um, as you mentioned before Jake the system that you've got or you've mentioned and other front end systems have got um, they're able to accommodate a whole range of of residents and their wishes and things so that's good to know that we can yeah, get around it with that um, that type of thing all right wonderful i'll let you go on to the next one um so this is just following up on what we were just talking about with the electro electro electric bollards but a lot of buildings now are having you know ev charging ev charging stations in there but more with now for any companies that are saying well we, we also have electric scooters in there we've got car for hire so there's a company I caught up with, they do cars for hire. Whether, whether the car is outside of the building or in the building, that this is what's happening. And I guess more, more and more people maybe will, when these services come into the building or, or, it's, or it comes up in an AGM, maybe you say, okay, well, hang on, yeah, we can provide one car for the building and then they can hire it as they please, whether the building is rented or it's a uni, a lot of uni students or someone just doesn't have a car, but they really want to hire a car when they need it on a weekend or so. Yeah, that these, these are the, the services and products that I'm talking about that they keep they're getting um, thought of. And I'm saying, well, great, let's put it in the building. But again, if we if all these products and services come into a building, you're going to have 20 apps one day. To, to do it so we're saying always have a front of house system and then get get the front of our system to integrate with these new services and products and new technologies so that it's easier to get these products into your building or services and then to use them so again for this one you know you can have um, bookings uh, so that it's easy to book the charging station or the uh, the, the electric scooter or um, the car so it's fair you can put the bollards again up in the ev stations to make that all fair and you can have a payments feature so some depending on how it's all set up the resident goes on they don't need to pay for the car hire through a different platform they go on the credit card is connected to the front of house system they just simply book it still tells them how much it's going to cost so a pop-up screen will say, you know, you're going to be charged $50 for the day for the e-scooter. Um, please proceed, um, et cetera. And then that's it. They go down. They know their e-scooter is number one. And it's already paid. It, it takes the money out and they can use it for the day. Same with the charging station. Um, same with the car. So, yeah, that's um, pretty much the, this sort of the, these um, uh, services and products. And obviously, like I said, not all buildings can have DB charging stations or, or certain things. Um, but yeah, I guess what we're saying is look at these, these products, see if they can be installed, maybe right, not this second, or you might need to do something to the building to get it. But 
yeah, it's um, they're here and they're making life quite quite easy for a lot of residents. Excellent. So they just have to have sort of a front of system, front of house system, and then it's that app that they're accessing all of these other um, services through and, and products as they come on board, uh, which makes a lot of sense as well. We had a question that was sent in um, just to the hosts to ask about um, the screens as well and the type of companies that provide those screens. But Jake, would you be the best person to contact about that? Because you would have contacts with all of sort of the people that you're dealing with. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, give me a call and I can pass. Uh, uh, contact me and I'll I'll pass on their details. Sure. Okay, that's excellent. The one that comes to mind for me is a company called Convision, which I think is down in Victoria as well. But I think they operate in all states around Australia now, and they're providing that service as well. So yeah, okay, excellent. Alex and Convision, and now um, yes. lives up in Sydney at Habitat. So we use both of them. And yeah, yeah. Excellent. Okay, so there's a few around that you can contact. Excellent. All right, yeah. thank you. So yeah, another product that's getting installed in a lot of buildings, old and new. Um, again, yes, it looks great in brand new buildings and it's easier to install, obviously, at the beginning, either in the wall or wherever it is. But, yeah, I guess this is more and more a big issue at buildings. Parcels are getting um, delivered more, especially, obviously, with the lockdown and people um, getting stuff delivered. I know in America, a lot of the old buildings that were built, it's a big issue because people just order all the time and a lot of the old buildings you open the doors and there's there's not even a lobby it's just a staircase to go upstairs and there's nowhere to put the parcels so they're looking at, at a lot of these products um, and I guess when you install the parcel locker you know it can be inside or outside the building so there's water uh, weatherproof parcel lockers that can be installed outside the building um, if there's an area for it um, again not every this might not fit all every building but I guess a lot of buildings never thought about this they're like oh we don't have a lobby okay but you've got a little area on the left of your entrance that can have four lockers even though you're in a 13 apartment block um, and then it's just a lot easier to have your parcels uh, locked up we're seeing pro uh, companies now that do laundry lockers but purely only for laundry that have a bag in there just for, for your laundry you book that um, that locker, you take the laundry bag out, you fill it up, you come down, you put it down, you close it. And then obviously the company knows that there's a bag ready to uh, get picked up. They come, they get it. They can obviously get into the building. They take your laundry, uh, wash it, drop it back in, and you get a notification that your laundry is ready to get picked up. So that's happening, uh, I think, a lot now. Um, and then, yeah, it's um, everything is secure and it's also traceable, which I guess a lot of the time we want to know. We want to know when it was dropped off, when it was picked up, when it was uh, dropped back. And so, yeah, we'll have a log of everything. Well, most of these companies do have a log and we just integrate with them or any front of house can integrate with them so that they've got a log and, and, and a register and it's, everything is traceable. And then, yeah, obviously, the, the, you know, couriers need to get into the building. So yeah, a lot of the systems now that are in these companies, they do, their system allows when something has been ordered and they know it's getting delivered to that building, the courier can give grant and get access. But that's where we're saying, if you have a system, a facial recognition or click to access, when everything is booked, they can be out that one off courier can get into your building. So yeah, that's pretty much the locker systems that are, that are out there at the moment. It's pretty exciting. Yeah, that's great. We get a lot of questions again come in from people um, about security to do with mail and having their mailboxes jimmied open and the locks broken so people can access their um yeah the details from inside their, their letterboxes. So it is a really great system. Um, and I we also get questions about the building manager and is the building manager responsible to collect my parcels? And I mean it's not really up to the building manager to do that role. That's not their job. So it's great to see that this can you know, take a bit of that um, sort of heat off them as well. Um, and do you have uh, I was just thinking if you have an outside system, I know the security in these lockers is quite good, but can you um, uh, does your system or something like a front end also uh, work alongside a, a surveillance system or CCTV cameras as well, Jake? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. We can as long as there's an API for any of these companies, security systems, lockers, facial recognition, doesn't matter. As long as there's an API that the front of our system should integrate, be able to integrate with any company. 
Excellent. All right, that's great. Okay, we had a couple of um, questions about that. So one of them was to do with the courier access. Um, and so you've mentioned that, which is which is good and covered that one. So we had another question, what if parcels are dropped off into a locker and not picked up or emptied and it removes the use of one locker? So if, if the locker if the locker has a parcel that's been in there for three days, yeah, so that, that resident will keep getting notified. Um, and then, yeah, the, the, there can be a, a way that that parcel has to be removed um, so that that locker can become available. And that can be set up um, before those lockers are installed. And everyone understands that. Yeah. Okay, so maybe it goes back to a default, like the building manager or something gets notified after a week and then he goes and collects the parcel and puts it somewhere or some, some sort of a system that works for that building. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Uh, and then we also... Uh, if it's an outside locker, how do couriers know how to access the locker and which locker would they have some sort of a, that they'd be working with that locker company and then there'd be an access code provided or? Yeah, so it's the same. So one of the big companies in Australia is my parcel locker and they do Australia Post and, and all that. So it's the same thing when a lot of the time the couriers actually, they get, it's all integrated. So they get notified that they need to drop that parcel off at, um, that Australia post in that lock of four and they've got they get a one-off code they go to the system they press the code in it opens locker for whatever it was they drop it in and close it and that's it and then they walk away and then you get notified that your that your parcel's in locker four ready to get collected okay and you did mention about the um, dry cleaning and then someone else has asked could the locker system be used for grocery delivery too so i think you can get refrigerated lockers these days as well can't you yeah so the, the laundry one is specific for laundry but those other locker systems there's ground floor there's my parcel locker a lot of them will have a don't know if it's refrigerated i think it's uh insulated or like cool or like a cool bag that it can it can stay cool for a long period of time okay excellent and can the lockers be used in reverse so you can leave something for someone else to come along and pick up or does it only work one way <laughs> no they, they do work two ways um I, I can't remember if both of them do that um but yes i'm pretty sure that one of them definitely can um but yeah that i think that's going to happen more and more and, and and with that comment is that if the building does have a short stay i guess and like you said, with letterboxes getting broken into, this changes it. So you can actually then get your a locker, put your keys in a safe locker that's really hard to uh, uh, break into, or it's now inside the building because we're not using the letterboxes. And so, yeah, the keys can be left in there for that short stay guest to come and, and or the cleaner, even the cleaner. So, yes. yeah, yeah. This is why it's changing the way and the safety of the building. And that's why down the track, I think every building should have a lock, some type of locker system or electric letterboxes. All right. So this one is um, uh, a little bit um, that we've seen come up and it's tracking building assets. So a lot of the building, you know, we see fire extinguishers being taken off and blown around and all of that. There are companies out there um, that, you know, they have products there that they can install without everyone really sort of knowing that there is something on those assets, whether it's a defibrillator, fire extinguisher, even your keys, they're in the key safe, in the, in the trades key safe, where well, you can put a tracker on it. There's so many trackers out there now, we put it in our luggage to go overseas or, you know, wherever, you're on your dog, you can put it on your pet, why don't we put it on keys and fobs? So if a trade does accidentally take it and we don't have a digital key safe, we've got an old key safe, why don't you go and look at putting on a tracker on your keys? Because then we know that the electrician has it and is in a different area and we just call him. So these, these products, I think, really handy. And they're also protecting the building's assets. So, you know, they're expensive defibrillators, fire extinguishers. So if we can put stuff on these things, it, it really it helps the managers. You know, they'll get an alert when someone actually picks up the, the fire extinguisher. Well, is it getting serviced? Or is it 2 a.m. and someone's using it? So, you know, we, we know what's going on now with a lot of these products. And also there are, there are products there that do, um, you know, when there's, a, when there's a flood, they put something on the floor in a pump room that if it gets to a certain level, we know that there's an issue and then an alert goes and then the plumber gets auto, autom um, autom automatically notified. They've got to, they run down there and they know that there's a leak, there's a, 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 a leak or whatever is going on. So there's all these amazing products that are happening out, uh, that are 
they're being created. And um, yeah, I just think that a lot of buildings should really look at these. these. It solves a lot of issues and helps managers sort of manage their buildings, um, especially when things go wrong without actually doing anything. Yep. Excellent. We've got, just to let everyone know, as well, kind of extending on from that, uh, we've got a session coming up in a few months' time with Sedgwick and with Bolton to do with building innovation and how technology helps owners better manage their building. And it's looking at like thermal imaging and, uh, and defects and that kind of thing. And it should be a really interesting session. So keep an eye out for that one as well. Awesome. Cool, cool. All right, we'll quickly go to the next one. Um, well, I won't go too much into this, but you know, I'm following on a little bit from your chat um, last week with about chat GP and, and all that. But we know that one of the biggest issues in your building is in buildings these days are when an issue happens. And we're saying that down the track, maybe the building isn't ready, but AI and it is actually useful for a building, maybe you know, over time that you know what happens with the building. So that so the building knows what happens when there's an issue. And so, you know, there are front of our systems where we've created something um, that's going to solve a lot of this issue. So you can have a, you can, the manager can create an issue, you know, lift out of order, garage door out of order, no hot water, um, you know, animal pet behaviour, et cetera, or just one that says other. And then we can have a workflow of, the manager can set up a workflow of how that when a resident goes onto their dashboard, they go report an issue, they go click, you know, um, garage doors out, they click it, all of a sudden it, it, it's been set up by the manager to know what happens with that. It just goes straight to the garage door company, um, does it notify the entire residence, um, you know, all of that. And all of a sudden the manager is in a, in a, in a meeting and the issue has been reported and it's probably even been solved after the meeting. So it's changing, I guess, the way that issues um, are, are reported and how they're resolved. And I think, you know, if a building does this in a year, we'll have data, the building will have data of all the issues that were uh, sent through, how it was solved, how quickly it was solved. And then all of a sudden you actually, the workflow is actually, it, it's null and void. So AI just kicks in and they go, okay, uh, uh, vomit in lift, great, bang, sends it to the cleaner. The cleaner just cut, get, uh, gets a work order, bang, they come and get it. Um, you know, uh, garage door, uh, front entrance door is out of order, stuck in the open position, bang, done. They know, it sends it to the, uh, the, the uh, front door company and, and that's it, and everyone's notified. So no one then goes and has to re report the issue again. They actually can't because like, when they go to report an issue, it says one open, front doors are uh, out of order or open. So I guess, yeah, this, this, this is the future um, of a lot of how the, the way that the building is run in terms of uh, when there's an issue in a building. Great. All right. Well, you heard it here first. So Jake's got this wonderful idea. It sounds really exciting. Um, and that AI is out there. Like you mentioned, we had the session last week to do with ChatGPT, and it's about um, having a look at what's out there at the moment and ways you can utilise it. And of course, it will keep on moving forward quite rapidly. And it's, um, yeah, it's a matter of keeping up with all of that. And thank goodness we've got people like you, Jake, to come along and tell us what's happening out there and, and ways we might be able to utilise it in our building. Um, but yeah, that does sound really, really great. We will probably delve into that as we spoke about before. Uh, yeah, before we had the meeting, Jake and I had to talk about it. We'll probably delve into that a little bit more next year. So keep an eye out for that session as well, early in the year, probably. If we go into this one, obviously it's for pretty much a newer building, but we're looking at uh, like buildings are looking at um, being created to be 100% smart. So a lot of the, these buildings we're, we're looking at integrating with, that it can be an a, a intercom system that is just a tablet at the front of the building, not hardwired to any apartment door, and each apartment gets their tablet. So their tablet and their phone is their intercom. They can turn on the lights. They can put on the heater and air conditioning, open the blinds. So they might have alarm security system. They might have an electric fireplace. And so what we're saying is, I guess we're working with developers to say, well, if your home can do that, a standalone home, why can't a building complex, a brand new building being built in 2023, or let's call it 2024, why can't that be set up the same way? Why are we still doing it like we did it 20 years ago, when we know that there are issues. We don't want an intercom system that is hardwired. We don't want fobs and, 
and yeah, have a backup system that if the uh, if the uh, electricity goes out, don't worry, we've already set it up. It, there's a generator and it opens it for two hours or four hours, just opens it until it's sold. So yeah, there's there we're working with some with some developers or a particular developer, and yeah, we should have our first smart building hopefully done next year, which is really exciting. Yeah, that is that's excellent. We'd love to hear more about that as the project gets closer. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, I just yes, I'll quickly go on to the the next um the next screen and. So yeah, we've talked about certain products, but there are, there are some more amazing uh, products and services getting created. So there's one that does external building images, like up to one centimeters. They use a drone, they fly around your building. You can see some images, it's clear as day. It goes to one centimeter and it takes, and those, those images are there every year. So you have that for 2023, then next year you do 2024, next year 20. So you can actually see when the paint is fading and you go, oh, 2019, it was like that. 2020 was like, oh, okay, in 2025, we're going to do the painting. Or there, was, there wasn't a hole there last year, but there's a hole there, there this year. So these, you know, they, the people are coming up with some amazing ideas and it's just, it's incredible. We love it. And we'll integrate with them. So that the manager only has the one system. We've, we've got, there's one particular company, they think the only one in Australia doing it, they're called Suggestify. Um, they're, they're connecting uh, places to the building and community. So, you know, like if I'm from a different state and I come to Melbourne and I'm living in the city, all right? So I wanna know I've got a dog or I've got a cat, I've got, I want a cat, a cat walker. I wanna know when, you know, that I wanna get the cat grooms. I wanna know I'm a vegan. I wanna know where to eat at the vegan place. This, this company, they, they, I can log on and we're gonna have it that it's part of that building that people can su suggest that oh this is the this is a really good dog uh, walker this is a, you know great dog groomer this uh, you know Chinese place is amazing um, this breakfast place is amazing and and so all of a sudden you're bringing everyone together and if I'm a, if I if I'm on this this platform I can suggest to you because you I know you're moving to Victoria in that area oh that's a, the best gym go to that gym so it's bringing everyone together. Then again, when you're moving to moving from place to place, there should be just one product, one company that just says, "Oh, we'll do everything for you. We'll and we'll organize the best removalist in that area for you because they're the cheapest and we we highly recommend them. You know, we'll move all your services over, all of that stuff." And so there's one company in Sydney, happily, but there's there's a few of them. But yeah, it's a one stop shop. And so if we can add that into our or into a front of our system. Just makes it a, a lot easier. We've got personal trainers coming to us and yoga trainers that they want. They want to create us, you know, a, a fitness sort of thing just to that building. Or it doesn't matter. They could be an American company, but they're, it's for your building and it's done on this time. And we're sort of like getting everyone connected. So, yeah, I guess there are all these amazing products and services that are being created, and we just want to integrate into the one one platform or any platform and your building should have one platform where all of these come to so you don't have to have 20. And that's pretty much it and um, apartments are people's homes and yeah they should be having the same technology and products and be able to be as smart as any individual standalone house in 2023. Um, we can make buildings smarter, safer and easier for the people living in there today. Um, and it shouldn't matter the age or size of the building. By having a front of our system like mine more, we can turn any building digital into the 21st century and only have the one system, no matter, uh, one system, not five to 20 different systems or apps. So that's pretty much. That's great, Jake. Um, that sounds really good. I mean, that's one of the things, isn't it? You've got so many um, apps on your phone at the moment. People forget to use, you know, they've got something that they've had on there for ages. They forget that they've even got it on their phone. And then you've got to, yeah, you've got to keep up with everything. So it's really great to think that they're all in that one place. Um, yeah, wonderful. And if you had any questions that Jake's brought up, I know there was a lot of, someone put a message in there about how much information and lots of things that you can consider. And there is a lot. Jake obviously has contact with people because he's dealing with people in those areas areas that he's speaking about so please get in touch with Jake if you've got any questions about any of those specific things he keeps on top of all that technology <laughs> so he knows what's happening in that space which is why he's here to fill us in today but um, yeah wonderful um, Jake did you have anything else you wanted to mention before we finish up the session um, no just uh, that, that I just want people to, to sort of like embrace these new products and technologies and services and 
you know, yeah, just come together, understand that they're here and that they're actually, yeah, like I said earlier, that they can solve and minimise a lot of the issues. You know, they um, it can make your building smarter, but also that ultimately, I guess that most buildings want a safer building, whether that's parcels, whether it's facial recognition, maybe don't have to use all of them right, that, right this second, but just have a plan, come at your AGM, say, how can we solve this issue? How can we make the building safer? And use one or two products, start with that. That's, but yeah, embrace it. Like really, mm. there's amazing products out there. I think that's really good advice just to start small, especially if you are getting a bit of pushback from other people in the building and then maybe introduce a few things. And when they see uh, how easy they are and the positive aspects that are involved in it, they might be uh, more inclined to look at other, other um, products and take bigger steps than they would have initially when they see what they can do with them. Um, but it is all about just introducing bits and pieces. Some people, there, there is quite a bit of pushback. So, um, yeah, it's good to see. But remember, it's a majority game out there in Australia as well and so if you're interested in this especially if you're a lot owner um, talk to other people on the committee or um, other people in your building and see if you can create some interest and then start the conversation from there all right Jake well wonderful thank you so much we've got some great, really great comments coming through and we'll certainly go through all of those and have a look at them but if you have any more questions you can either um, jump onto the lookup starter site as always and put a comment in the ask a starter question page I'm sure like Jake's brought up so many bits of information there's some um, yeah a lot there to think about um, and then you can put a comment on the bottom of the recording and we'll get back to you and answer or you can get directly in touch with Jake as well someone asked if we could provide an idea of, of pricing but I think Jake it's probably best if people get in touch with you because as you said there's so many it's a bit like a plug and play system and there's so many different variables there depending on the size of the building and what you're after as well It'd be much better if you could contact him and he'll be able to have a look at what you've got and what you need and then then sort of get back to you there with a with a much more uh, reliable uh, estimate Okay, so thank you, Jake, for joining us again. It's always great to have you here and have these chats with you. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, and we'll see you next time, definitely. Okay, thanks for joining us, everyone. We'll see you next week. Bye. Yeah. If you gained value from this video, please hit like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you're looking for information about parking, strata insurance, defects and more, head over to lookupstrata.com.au or sign up to our free weekly newsletter via the link in the description box below.